Hello everyone, my name is Reza Dorani and uh, this video is part two of uploading documents from Power Apps to SharePoint document libraries, also tagging the documents while utilizing Microsoft Flow. So in the first video, we actually created this screen wherein users could come in, use the picture control, and uh, the trick is we can change this to all files and pick any file type. We added this to a gallery and we posted these documents to SharePoint using the help of Microsoft Flow. I'll put a link to the video in, uh, in the description for this new video. Now for the part two, what we are going to do is we use the picture control to post files to SharePoint from Power Apps. Now picture control is not that intuitive because every time the user has to go down and he has to be aware of the fact that he needs to change, he or she needs to change this to all files. So what we are going to do now is we're gonna build another screen and instead of using the picture control for adding files, we are gonna actually use the attachments control in Power Apps. Now, by default, there is no control in Power Apps for attachments, as you can see. However, there is a nice trick, and this was put out by MVP Paul Comsey, wherein uh, he, he showcased this uh, trick or hack wherein you can actually get the attachment control. So in order for us to get the attachment control, what we would have to do first is we would have to create a form in Power Apps using SharePoint lists. So the first thing what I'm going to do is in order for me to do that, I need to create a connection with SharePoint. So I'm gonna to connect to any list in SharePoint that has attachments enabled. And uh, once I do that, I'm gonna create another screen. We are gonna call this attachments screen. And out here, I'm just gonna create the edit form and connect to devices as my data source. So as you can see, the attachments data card here has a control for attachments. This control is not available in the controls list. However, I can copy this, right click copy, and I can paste it on my screen. So I have it as a separate independent control from my form. Now in, in this case, I don't need my form now because I've already got the attachment control. So I'm just gonna delete my form and I do not need that SharePoint list data connection as well. So I'm just gonna go and remove it. I had added one before as well. That's why it showed up as it showed up twice. So I'm gonna pick this control, place it here. As you can see, there are a few errors because the attachment control was related to the edit form, which had certain properties that were related to it. I no longer need them. So I'm just gonna quickly clear up all the, all the properties that I do not need and I have this nice looking attachment control, which I will first rename to attach. Now, the advantage of the attachment control over the picture control, of course, is when the user clicks attach file, he will get all files and he can pick any type of file and attach it to the control. So a lot more intuitive. Now, the next uh, goal for us, just like how we did in the previous video, was whenever the user hits add file, we want to add it to a collection. Now. In case of add file, we were adding it to a collection and showcasing it in a gal gallery. The attachments con control is different. It's already showing me the attachments associated with it. Although I need a collection because when I hit post to contracts library, I need to pass that collection. I convert it into JSON object by using this new function in Power Apps. Include the binary data and post it to Microsoft Flow, which will then post the data stream as a file to my SharePoint document repository, which was my contracts document library. Now, in case of add file, whenever I was adding a file or whenever I was clicking the button to add a file, if we look at the properties, I'll actually show on select right here. We were adding a couple of properties. One was the title of the file, which I was directly getting. And I was also using data stream, which was the image control that we were hiding behind the scenes. Now the image control is the control that gives me that data stream. In case of attachments, if I was to create a collection every time attach, an attachment is added or removed. So let's first go and clear this and let's go ahead and create a collection first. So I'm gonna click the control. As you can see, it has different properties like on add file, 
on remove file. So what we are going to do is on add file, every time a file is added in this attachment list, what we are going to do is we are going to clear collect, we're going to create a new collection. Clear collect, collection, attachments. Okay, and uh, we are going to use, so we have this attachment control right here called attach dot attachments. This is going to give me all the attachments, okay, associated with this control. So all I've done so far is I have just created this collection on file add. There is also another function called on remove file. So these are good also delete a file after he's added one and we are going to just re create the collection once the user clicks on removing a file. So if I play this right now, and if I, let's say, attach contract three, attach contract one, attach contract five, and let's say I remove contract one, I should have only three and five. And if I look at my collection of attachments, I have three and five. Now, if you notice the attachments collection, it has two properties to it. Every attachment has two properties in the attachments collection. They have the name, which is the name of the file that I have uploaded. And the second thing is the value. Now, if you notice the value is not a data stream, it's a URL to a local blob storage and power apps where it is actually maintaining the reference to this file. In case of the previous collection that we used, which was the collection of contracts, this was in the case of our picture control. If you look at this collection, we actually have the data stream. It's only showing the value for image, but for the other file types, we actually have the data stream right here. Now I need to create that data stream. And the trick here to create that data stream is I need to have a picture control wherein I can get the data stream from. In this case, I don't have the data stream. As you can see, I just have a link to the local blob storage in Power Apps. And I cannot pass that to Flow because Flow won't understand the, it needs the data stream in order for it to convert it to binary and post it to SharePoint as a file. So how do we do that? In this case, what we will go ahead and do is we'll create a gallery control. And in this gallery, the data source for this gallery is going to be the collection of contracts. Okay. Now, in this gallery, we have the title control. So I'm going to call this and it's using the title property of the attachment, which has the name. So I'm going to say uh, contract uh, name and this is a label control so LBL contract name. Then we have the image control. Okay, I believe I used the wrong collection. We need to use the collection of attachments. So the name of the attachment is in the name property. So I've used the name property here and I've created a label called LBL contract label. Uh, the subtitle field right now has the value property. Now the value property, as I mentioned, is just a link to the local blob within Power Apps. Now I need that image control in the gallery that I just dropped. I have an image control. I'm going to call this image data stream. So this is going to be the image that will give me that data stream. And the image property is going to be this item dot value. Why value? Because value has the link to the local blob storage. Now, because in this case I have uh, I've uploaded two PowerPoint files, of course, I cannot see the data stream right here. It's an image file and only show me images. So let's say if I upload an image, as you can see, it will show me the image file because this is the image control. However, for other file types, it actually has the data stream and it's storing it right here within that image control. So now what I have been able to achieve so, so far is I have this gallery. Now, I do not want to show this gallery to the user because honestly, I'm just using this gallery so that I can get the data stream, which I have. So my next step would be to just hide this gallery. For now, I'm just going to keep it at the side. We're going to add a button, which will be called post to contracts library. So we're going to post this data to our contracts library in SharePoint when the user clicks on this button. Now in the previous screen, we had contract date and contract type. So I will, these were the extra properties that we were passing for all the files. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm just gonna rename this to date contract date. And I'm gonna rename this to drop down contract type. Okay. So great, I've got everything set up right now. Now the next step, step of course is to post the data to the contracts library and I'm going to use the same flow that we used before. 
Now, when I was calling that button before, as you can see, we were converting the collection to a, a JSON object and including the binary data. And then we were passing the date that the user picked for the contract date and the type of contract that the user picked. In this case, in our attachments case, right now, yes, I have a collection of attachments, but this collection does not have the data stream. It just has the value, which is the link to the local blob storage. The gallery in turn though, has this control called image, which has the value, which is the data stream that I'm looking out for. So in order for me to do that, I need to add one additional step. What I'm going to do here is whenever the user clicks this button, I want to create this new collection, which will actually have the data stream and the title, just like we created for the previous case. So in order for me to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another collection. We are going to call this collection attachments gallery, because this is coming from my gallery. Okay. So before I create this collection for every item in this gallery, so I'm going to do for all uh, my gallery is called, we're just going to call this gal attach. Okay. So what we're going to do is for every item in this gallery. So all items in this gallery, what we want to do is want to go ahead and add the data to a collection. Okay. And what is the data that we want to add? We want to add title and we want to add the title property associated with the record that I'm adding to this collection. Now the title property, we are storing it in this label in the gallery called LBL contract name. So all I need to do is just use LBL contract name dot text. That will give me the title property. And then I also need the data stream property. And in order for me to get the data stream, I have the image control. So what I will do here, I will say image data stream dot image. And this, will now give me the collection that I'm looking out for. Okay. And every time this button is clicked, I want to also make sure that I recreate this same collection for every item in the gallery. So I'm just going to clear this collection. So let's play this app and let's click on post to contracts library. In this case, I have three files. Let's look at this new collection. Now collection attached attachments gallery. And as you can see, I have the data stream and the title exactly as the previous case. The only difference is because this was attachments, we had to go the longer route and create another hidden gallery. Now I don't need this gallery uh, to be visible on the screen. So I'm just going to hide this gallery for now. We're going to make this visible false. And when the user is posting this data to uh, Microsoft flow, now what we can do is just like before, I'm just going to copy what I had before. I'm going to go back to my attachment screen. I'm going to post this data and all I need to do now is change the collection because I've got this new collection that I want to post to Microsoft flow from power apps, I'm converting it to JSON and making sure I include binary data. So the data stream is posted out, uh, the date picker in this case, I have another date picker control for this form. It's called date contract date. And then the drop down is called DRP contract type. That's it. That's all I have to do. I'm going to go ahead and post this data and we will see this data being posted to the contracts document library. Now, just for this case, I'm going to just delete all of this so that we have new data, clean data posted in here. So I'm going to play this app again and I'm going to pick a contract date of 31st of July. Contract type is going to be TNM. I have three files. Let's upload another one. Let's upload contract one. I have four files now post contracts library and this will now post the data to Microsoft flow. And if we look at the flow, the flow is currently running and it will go through the same steps as in video one, wherein it will get the JSON object from power apps and get the contract date that I posted 31st of July, the contract type TNM, and then it will go through. And for each object that it re retrieved in the JSON object, which is the files that I'm posting, it will go ahead and create the file and update the properties. And if we look at the contracts document library at the back end, the documents are in here. The contract date of 31st July is right here and the contract type, which was time and materials is, is right here. So all of this now is working. So we are posting data from power apps to flow using the attachments control. And then it's from flow. It's coming to the SharePoint document repository. So two options video one was using the picture control 
video two now is a more uh, extendable or a more useful approach because it's using the attachment control as it is a lot more uh, user-friendly. Thank you so much for watching.